in introducing the First Lady of this nation and of the world. I would like to say that while the President of the United States is the head of our government, is the head of the Democratic Party, in a very real sense, Rosalind is our heart. The First Lady of the United States of America, Rosalind Carter. As I was saying before the intermission, it is our great honor to have with us this evening the heart of America, the heart of the Democratic Party, the First Lady of the United States and of the world, Rosalind Carter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Governor. It's wonderful for me to be here and to see so many old friends. And I want to especially congratulate Senator Pepper on receiving the Hubert H. Humphrey Award. It's a It's a special honor that he richly deserves 
and I'm very proud for him. Congratulations, Senator. <laughs> It's been a wonderful day for me to be back in Florida and with all of you. And I'm not going to speak long to you tonight because you've all heard me. <laughs> and I'm going to try not to repeat myself. But I am very proud of my husband's accomplishments as president. And I am also. And I'm also very proud that he has revived some of the best and most basic values of our country and of our Democratic Party. For the first time in years, many years, we can feel confident and at ease with such values as patriotism, basic morality, compassion, truthfulness, family life, and belief in God. I've seen great I've seen the great change around the country in the past 3 years and our administration and our democratic party can take credit for that change. Our beliefs and moral and ethical principles provide us with a sense of purpose. We recognize our opportunities and our responsibilities. Our legacy is to work together to benefit all, to serve our fellow man, to meet our challenges with courage and with confidence in ourselves and in our fellow man. Let me just remind you of some of the beliefs that have guided my husband and the Democratic Party since he took office. Ours is a party of compassion. We believe in equal opportunity. That is why Democrats moved firmly and courageously to end racial segregation that blighted our nation. It's been only a few years since segregation was an accepted way of life in our country. That's not so anymore, but we must continue the progress. We, have, we must continue to fight discriminations of all kinds. <laughs> Democrats have been the party to reach out to the poor, the afflicted, victims of injustice, and the refugees and immigrants who still come to our shores. And we Americans are listening to our consciences now, reaching out and sharing. We've done this time after time in our history, and we must continue to do it. That is part of our greatness. The Democratic Party believes in hard work and its dignity. We, leave, we believe that everyone has the right to a job, to have the opportunity to support themselves. Like you, Like you, Jimmy has worked all of his life. He grew up on a farm during the Depression, and he worked in the field from sunrise to sunset. And as adults, he and I have worked together. It's a gratifying experience, part of our American life, and we've all been rewarded in different ways. But we Democrats know that the best reward is being useful in the world. That is why. This administration put America back to work as the first and most important step towards solving our other problems. We wanted to make it possible for Americans to earn our own way again and to be contributing members of our families, of our communities, and of our nation. And after a lifetime of hard work, we believe that a person should have a secure and happy old age. The party that fought against Republican opposition to Social Security, minimum wage, Medicaid and Medicare is still protecting and improving these programs. 
Democrats believe that government can and must be effective and competent. We want government to work so it can help people. Waste, fraud, mismanagement of government betray the poor, the elderly, and the disadvantaged, people who lost refuge, whose last hope is government. And Democrats believe in peace, and especially after our nation's longest and most divisive war in history. For the first time, the first time in 56 years, we have a president who can report to the nation that not a single America has died in combat during his administration. That peace is and must be based on strength. Our nation has never been stronger. We know fully that wars begin only when an aggressor believes that his adversaries are weak and vulnerable. Peace is based on calm restraint and deliberation. And I know this is uppermost in Jimmy's mind as he faces the crisis in Iran. Peace is also based on our shared values, including freedom, self-determination, and human rights. As we found out, a nation cannot have one set of values for domestic life and another set for its foreign policy. Our dealings with others must be based on our fundamental beliefs, and for the first time in years, we are doing just that. Finally, the Democratic Party believes in the future and in change. Not in change just for its own sake, but as a force that we can harness for human progress. We have constantly experimented with tried and with new ideas. And we're doing that today in confronting inflation and energy problems. We know that today's problems are not permanent. We know that the only limits are in the realism and imagination and the courage we apply to solving our problems. We know there are limitless possibilities ahead if we confront our problems realistically and decisively. As President John Kennedy said, change is the law of life. And those who look only to the past or the present are certain to miss the future. The beliefs that I have outlined tonight form the tradition of the Democratic Party. It is a tradition come to life again. Democrats are leading our country, and our nation is better for it. The problems we face today can be a barrier to a bright future only, only, if we ignore those problems or try just easy solutions. There are no easy solutions, and we must face our problems together. It will not be easy. We must struggle to continue the work of the Democratic Party. Every action of a president in office is taken apart and compared to an abstract standard of perfection. He often must stand alone while others criticize from the sidelines. But when opponents arise, they have to meet high standards, standards that Jimmy Carter has met and carried out for nearly three years. I believe that you here tonight and the people in our country will agree with me that there is no comparison. For the President of the United States, let me thank you for your loyalty and for your support. Thank you for standing by him and by our party. You have made a lonely job a lot less lonely for him, and I'm deeply grateful to, to you. And Jimmy told me when I left home tonight to tell you all here tonight that he cares for every one of you, and I care 
for every one of you. By knowing that you're here and that you support us and that you care for us, you sustain us. That's what makes it possible for Jimmy Carter to lead our country. Let's keep working in the great tradition of the Democratic Party to make this great country of ours even greater than it already is. Thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, would you kindly remain standing as Reverend Moses Stith.